Kevin Durant was forced to leave tonight's game with a right knee injury after Jimmy Butler inadvertently fell on the outside of his leg. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at what might have happened. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and if you're new here and enjoy learning about the underlying anatomy and mechanisms of the sports medicine world, then consider subscribing to support the channel and stay up to date with all my future videos. Getting right to the play where this happened, what we basically have is a forced valgus load to the outside of Durant's right knee as a result of Jimmy Butler falling into him. Valgus is whenever the knee bends to an inward position. So it kind of goes in this way. So when Jimmy Butler falls, he lands on the outside of Durant's knee. The force is going to push Durant's knee inward right there, which can of course stress the structures on the inside of the knee and sort of compress everything on the outside. Now there's not really a better view to see if there was any tibial shift. It looks like Durant's leg was initially pretty straight whenever this happened, as opposed to then when we get down here, we see it in a little bit of flexion. So unfortunately, really only one view that shows again that forced kind of valgus load. Now as Durant's kind of rolling around on the court here, we get maybe another clue about the injury location as we can see him grab kind of on the inside of that right knee. Because of course it's not super sensitive, but it's at least indicative that his discomfort is on the inside of the knee as opposed to something like the outside or down at the foot or the ankle. The injury I'm most concerned about for Durant is an MCL tear of that right knee. If we look at our biodigital anatomy tool here, I've highlighted the MCL, it stands for medial collateral ligament. Medial because it runs on the inside portion or the medial portion of the knee. Collateral because it's stabilizing on the outside and of course ligament because it's detaching from the femur down to the tibia. The primary job of the MCL is to support the knee from bending inward into that valgus position. So if we kind of zoom all the way out here and you imagine Jimmy Butler falling and landing on the outside portion of the knee, that's going to push the knee inward, which in turn is going to put these structures like the MCL under tension. If you put enough of a structure under tension, you can potentially tear those ligament fibers. Some key learning points about the MCL, tears that occur up at the proximal portion or near where it originates off the femur are typically more predictable in terms of their recovery and have better blood supply. Tears that occur to the meniscus down at the distal portion where it inserts onto the tibia aren't necessarily as reliable with their healing. The blood supply is not as good down here, and these can be a little bit more stubborn of specific injuries to get back from, as opposed to your standard, more proximal MCL origin type of tear. There's also two layers to the MCL, a superficial and a deep. The superficial layer is the one we typically think about as really the structural function of the MCL, whereas the deep portion of the MCL is more involved in stabilizing and sort of anchoring the meniscus. So whenever you have an injury to the MCL, you always have to worry about accompanying meniscal injuries, and specifically those two little ligaments that you might hear about, they're the meniscotibial ligament from the meniscus to the tibia, then the meniscal femoral ligament from the meniscus up to the femur. So remember, two layers of the MCL, the more superficial layer on top is truly stabilizing against those valgus movements and the deeper fibers of the MCL are more involved with anchoring or supporting the attachment sites of the meniscus. ACL tears can always happen as a result of these sort of contact moments from the outside pushing the knee inward, but to be honest, this was low enough energy with Butler more kind of falling straight down as opposed to going directly like across into Durant's knee that I would be very shocked and surprised if this were something as severe as an ACL tear. The meniscus, like I talked about with its sort of integration into the MCL is always on the differential here as well, but I think MCL tear would be the most likely outcome. Recovery timeline, of course, depends on severity. A simple grade one partial strain of the ligament, you could be looking at just a couple of weeks to return. A grade two, where there's now some partial tearing, usually involves some laxity of the joint when you stress it, and that can take more in like the two to four week mark, if not a little bit longer. Grade three, where there's a complete tear, is not something we have to do surgery for right away, but can be more in like the one and a half to two month recovery window, depending on the individual. If you remember with Kevin Durant, of course, last year, almost right around this time, he suffered an MCL tear to his opposite knee that forced him to miss out on about one and a half to two months. So we could ultimately be looking at a similar absence if it's the same type of severity. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. Thank you for watching, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.